let's get straight into it. Some of the key uh, areas that you want to make sure that you're ticking off to ensure that you're developing an AFL body. And that, that is from a conditioning perspective, you're doing aerobic capacity work. So you're developing your critical speed over um, slow uh, aerobic efforts around 60% of your heart rate. You're developing your threshold running. So efforts that feel uh, quite hard on your uh, cardiovascular uh, system. So your heart rate will be around 90% of your max heart rate. So think of intervals like 400 meter efforts, um, 600 meter efforts, even using 200s and, and you can do shorter rep running with lower rest periods, short recovery periods. So getting that heart rate up nice and high, close to our max. And then of course our repeat speed. And that's where we might start bringing in, like I talked about last week, the benefits will be around player availability. So by um, ticking off those key areas of the game, you'll be uh, a more resilient body to be able to handle the demands of how you play, um, both from a volume point of view, so your distances that you cover uh, with that um, critical speed aspect that I talked about, which is low intensity, threshold running when the game gets at its hardest. So those repeat efforts that you need to do and your heart rate gets really up, you're getting up and off the ground, you're tackling, you're uh, fending people off, you're doing a hard sprint, you're then jogging back, so that continuous intermittent nature of the game. And then, of course, the, the high intensity work. So from a sprinting point of view, those chase down tackles or where you're breaking away from the contest and you're moving at high speeds. Moving more to the strength and power side of things, it is a, obviously a contested game. So we want to make sure, and from an aesthetic point of view, when if you're for those that have clicked this link and you want to develop an AFL body, maybe you don't even play the football, but you just um, want to look like how the athletes look rather than look like a bodybuilder or, or other type of athletes. Um, you might want to look like an AFL footballer, which are naturally quite lean. And that athletic shape, that's where the strength and power program comes in. So typically we'll do our volume-based work to build muscle mass in higher sets and um, not in higher reps. So what I mean by that, at times, you'll actually flip what the traditional what a traditional bodybuilding session might look like of, let's say, four sets of eight to 12 reps. We might be doing things like eight sets of four. Um, with good rest period in between because we can lift at much higher intensity. So the reps that you are doing are going to improve your maximal force production, your, your strength. And then for the footballers in our academy, this month's Get Better Plan will be all about how to safely uh, develop your athleticism for junior footballers. So we have a lot of junior footballers and we have parents of junior footballers in the academy. So I want to make sure we tackle this concept. I know there's still a lot of fear and stigma around um, weight training with junior football so between 12 and, and 16 years of age and I want to try and um, crush those myths so make sure that you're, you're confident in how to lift in the gym whether you be lifting with your son or lifting with your daughter and how to do it in a safe manner but also for those that not aren't going to the gym or haven't access, got um, a strength conditioning coach that you've got access to how important it is to seek one and, and start working on your athleticism for those that are really keen to, to work at the top level.